Welcome to the R video tutorial on multiple linear regression in R, polynomial regression. This video, we're going to learn how to do polynomial regression in R, which is basically fitting polynomials to our data. All right, so I have some data that is out on the repository, which is linked below, this hidebromide.csv, and I'm gonna read it into the variable hb1, and I'm gonna look at it real quick to see what the variables are. Uh, I put in the source of data, so if you wanted to know where it came from, this is the actual journal that the data was put in. So if you want to go back and look at a 1928 paper from the American chemist, you can have at it. All right, so what we have is run, HC, and temp. So HC is uh, heat constant or heat capacity, and the other is the temperature applied in Kelvin. So what I'm going to do is I'm first just going to plot this, and I've already got this typed in, so I'll give you a chance if you want to catch up. Uh, I'm going to plot this. The temperature gets the AC, HC, and my point character is going to be 2. I'm just mixing it up so you, you learn these different options that you might have. And then I'm going to put a linear regression line on it, and I'm going to color it blue. So let me run this real quick, and we can see what we get. And if you notice here that this line doesn't fit that well. If I stare at this, I notice that over here, my data is above the line. And then all along here, my data is below the line. And then up here, my data is again above the line. So it doesn't fit that well. It doesn't like snake through the data or even come close to matching up the pattern with it. Is it good? Is it reasonable? Maybe. Is it good? I would not consider that good. So what we'd like to do is put additional terms in here, polynomial terms, to see if we can't get a function that is curvy that will fit this. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is create additional items uh, such as squared terms, cube terms, and quadratic or uh, quartic terms in order to be able to fit those. So let's do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a variable. I'm going to call it hc1. And this is just going to be our data, our hb1 dollar sign hc. And then I'm going to make another one. I'm just going to call it temp1 because this is the first order temp. And it's just going to be hb1 dollar sign temp. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these. So we copy and paste this, copy and paste this, and one more time. So this one, I'm going to make it squared. This one, I'm going to make it cubed. This one, I'm going to make it to the fourth power. And I'm going to change these numbers as well. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to just be able to put this as a polynomial with each term in it. If you know what a polynomial is, it increases in degrees on the variable of interest. All right, then I'm just going to use my uh, LM function that I've used before to do this. Uh, it'll work. So LM, here my response is HC1, and this is going to be tilde, uh, or the squiggly, or twiddle, or whatever you want to call it, and then I have temp1 plus temp2 plus temp3 plus temp4. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a summary of mod 1. Uh, this is pretty easy to do, by the way. So I'm going to run this, and it says it doesn't like something because I didn't actually run all of it, if you notice that. So I need to go back and run all of it in order for it to work. So when I do this, sure enough, it gave me some output, and notice I get some ridiculously large numbers here, right? So this is a negative, but it's uh, times 10 to the 7th. Because you have to remember that when I take 180, which is one of the values, and I raise it to the fourth power, it's a big number. So I'm going to need to pay attention to it and know that these numbers are going to be big. And in another video, I'll talk about how to handle this a little bit better to, to make things flow better and to have less computational issues uh, because these things are highly multicollinear. All right, so I have the estimates, but how does it fit the data? So now I need to construct a variable. That way I can actually try to fit this data with a nice looking curve. So I'm going to first take a sequence. I'm going to make it x1. It's just going to be a sequence. And it looks like my data starts at 110, let's say. Goes to 180. 
And uh, how often we gonna? We'll just do it by one. That'll probably be good enough. Uh, now I'm gonna need to make x2, which is x1 squared, because I need to create these variables again. And yes, that I could use the predict function, but I'm purposely choosing not to, so you can see how things work. Cubed and again x4 which is, and if you notice, I made a mistake here. This should be x1, x1, and x1 to the fourth power. Okay, now that I have this, I can run this. And I'm also going to need one other variable, and I'm just going to call it ones. And it needs to be a repeat of one, and I am going to take it against, uh, the length of it is going to be the same as the length of x1. So, so I have a vector of ones. If you know how regression is set up, then the having this ones around is not that odd. Okay, so what I'm gonna make is I'm gonna call this y out, or how about y1 out, which is gonna be our predicted value. Actually, let's just make it pred one. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the coefficients that I have, but first thing I'm gonna do is C bind our ones, x1, x2, x3, x4. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a matrix for me. Uh, you can look at that here in a second. So percent star percent. And then I'm going to take the coefficients from mod 1. So I'm going to do mod 1 dollar sign coefficients. And let's see if this works. So let's run all of this. See if we get anything out or whether the dimensions are off. Okay, so now I have pred1, and the pred1 should be the dimensions that I want. If you notice, pred1 goes from 1 to 71, and it has values in it. Uh, notice the values don't seem to be quite right, because I have 10 and 0 0.5, 10.5, 10.5, .5, but we'll see what they look like over here. Yeah, these numbers are... Uh, could be right, right? Because this is our, our range here. So let's actually plot this now. So we're going to plot x1 against pred1. And uh, I'm going to make this actually x. Let's do the original plot. So I'm going to scroll up here, get our original plot of our original data. I'm going to keep the AB line around. I want to see how things change due to this. Let me scroll back down. I am going to plot this. And then I'm going to put lines on here, lines, x1, and then I'm going to do pred1, and I'm going to make the color equals, just for fun, red. And this will show us what the new one looks like, because what I've done here is I've created new x variables at each space along the axis for temperature. I've created the predicted values, and now I'm just going to plot all of them and see what it looks like. And if I stare at this, this thing seems to snake through the data much better than the original data or the original straight line. So this curvy line actually fits this data quite well con considering how well uh, or how poorly a line does. Uh, could we get better? Could we use a higher polynomial? Could we drop terms out? Maybe. But the whole point is, is that we have a model here that is much better than our original model by just using a polynomial. Okay, so this is enough for this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.